Welcome back to Clash of the Commanders, Women's Edition. This week we are discussing who the most influential woman in the backcountry was during the Revolution. My name is Ranger Adrian from 96 National Historic Site, and my answer to this question was Rebecca Bruton Mott. Rebecca Mott was born on January 15, 1737, to two prominent Charlestonians, Mary and Robert Bruton. On June 28, 1758, she married Jacob Mott, and they had seven children. Unfortunately, only three of them lived to be adults. Rebecca was a strong and determined patriot who, during the war, put all of her effort and resources into the Patriot cause. Her older brother, Miles Bruton, was a Patriot as well and was elected to the Provincial Congress. However, in 1775, he and his whole family were lost at sea during a trip to Philadelphia. With their deaths, Rebecca inherited all of his property including the Miles Bruton House in downtown Charleston and Mount Joseph in what was then the Orangeburg District, now current day Calhoun County. It was at Mount Joseph that Rebecca decided to build her mansion. This mansion is what would lead to her becoming one of the most famous women in South Carolina during the Revolution. Earlier in the Revolution, Rebecca had already proven her zeal for the Patriot cause. When Charleston needed to be refortified for its protection, she sent for all of her male slaves from Mount Joseph to come and assist in that construction. In January of 1780, she lost her husband to illness. That spring, when the British took over Charleston, her house, the Miles Bruton house that she had inherited from her brother, was commandeered by the British Army for headquarters. With her house being overrun by soldiers and officers, she and her family were confined to the upper story. Finally, in the fall of that year, she received permission to move herself, her three daughters, and her niece from Charleston. They would move to Mount Joseph. However, the British Army was soon to follow. Now, Mount Joseph was situated on a bluff overlooking the Charlestown and Rocky Mount roads, the perfect location for a fort and a supply depot to run supplies from Charlestown to the backcountry of South Carolina, including Camden, Fort Granby, and 96. The British, when they arrived, decided to do just that. As their southern campaign advanced, they worked their way into the backcountry and began setting up supply lines. They decided that Mount Joseph was a great spot for one of these supply depots. So they came and once again commandeered Rebecca's house. This time they made her and her family move to a farmhouse on the neighboring hill. Around her mansion, they dug a trench and put up parapets and named it Fort Mott. Light Horse Harry Lee described it as situated on a high and commanding hill, surrounded with a deep trench along the interior margin of what was raised a strong and lofty parapet. However, the fort had no artillery, something that would help the Patriots in the future. In command of the fort was Lieutenant Donald McPherson. In May of 1781, Fort Mott was garrisoned by around 150 British, Hessian, and Loyalist troops. On May 6th, Light Horse Harry Lee and Francis Marion arrived to lay siege to the fort. They were accompanied by between 400 and 450 soldiers as well as a six pound cannon. As they began their siege, Rebecca offered up the farmhouse that she and her family were living in for the Patriot headquarters. On the 8th, the Patriots began digging trenches or saps 
to approach the fort, about 400 yards from the house. On the 10th, they offered for McPherson to surrender, but he refused. He hoped that Lord Ralden would come to relieve him. Ralden was in the process of retreating from Camden and was not too far away. So it was a near thing, as Lee noted on the 11th that they could see the illumination of their fires, Ralden's fires that is. Realizing that they were about out of time, Lee and Marion made the regrettable decision that they must set fire to the main house. When they told Rebecca of this plan, she did not bulk. Instead, she told them, do not hesitate a moment. I will give you something to facilitate the destruction. And she handed them a quiver of arrows from the East Indies. As the flaming arrows were shot at the mansion, they struck the wooden roof and began quickly spreading fire. McPherson's men attempted to go out on the roof and kick those burning shingles off. However, they were driven back by the Patriots cannon firing canister shot. For those of you who don't know what canister shot is, just picture basically a giant shotgun shell. Forced to surrender, McPherson raised the white flag. Upon the surrender's acceptance, both sides extinguished the fire and saved the majority of the house. The Patriots had succeeded in capturing a su important supply post to the backcountry. This was due not only to Rebecca being willing for them to burn her house down, but for her also supplying the tools to do so. After the revolution, Rebecca returned to Charlestown. When people would comment on her role at Fort Mott, she was known to be modest and reply, too much has been made of a thing that any American woman would have done. It is for this reason, Rebecca's actions at Fort Mott, that I chose her as one of the most influential women in the backcountry. I hope you've enjoyed and I hope you'll join us next time.